name is Jim Hamrand, and I'm the legal and financial reporter at the Minneapolis St. Paul Business Journal. My family's always been very, uh, very devoted readers of newspapers, even as a kid. So I started journalism in high school with the high school newspaper. I just did some uh, editing and writing for it, and then I went to the University of Minnesota's journalism school to learn all about journalism, writing, and reporting. While I was there, I wrote for the Minnesota Daily. I was the policy reporter and a policy editor. Uh, I also did a little bit of writing for the Star Tribune and uh, had a management minor from the Carlson School of Management uh, in addition to the print journalism degree. After that, I got hooked up with ABC Network News to cover the bridge collapse here and the Republican National Convention. I've also covered public affairs for the Fairbow Daily News, the Northfield News, and it was there where I really got into courtroom reporting. Uh, writing about lawsuits, bankruptcies, criminal cases. Uh, I discovered that was something that I really enjoyed doing and the Business Journal in 2010 when everybody was getting hauled into court for all sorts of frauds and Ponzi schemes they wanted somebody to more proactively get in with the law firms, get into the courtrooms and write about the legal cases that were going on at the time. Uh, from there I, I told them you know I'd love to do that I came aboard, and about a year later, I started covering financial news for the Business Journal as well. Here at the Business Journal, uh, we're putting a much larger emphasis on breaking news online. Uh, previously, we would have tried to hold a story, that is, write a story on Wednesday to run in our Friday paper and hope that the news doesn't get out. Now we can write that story, but we can also put it online and we can claim that story as our own right from the get-go. That compresses our deadline schedules and uh, the time that we get to work on stories, but that also gives us a, an opportunity to keep updating a story like that and keep refining it in a different way. One of the things that I wish that I knew coming out of journalism school was the importance of networks the importance of staying in touch with the people who not only you were going to school with, but the people who were teaching you in the classrooms, the people who you were working with outside the classrooms and related uh, opportunities. Uh, those are the kinds of people that can help you later on figure out what maybe you would like to do, figure out the kinds of people that you need to get in touch with to do what you'd like to do, and uh, a lot of times can offer really solid uh, career advice or help as you go through your career. If you want to get started in business journalism, there's a few ways that you can do that. First of all, you don't necessarily have to start at a smaller newspaper. Uh, technology has reduced a lot of the barriers to publishing, so you don't need a printing press anymore. All you need is a, an internet connection. The best way to get started is just to do it. If you think that you're interested in something, learn as much as you can about it, write about it, learn more about it, write more about it. Uh, that's the best way really to get a start in journalism is just to, to do journalism. When we're looking to bring people on board at the Business Journal, obviously it's important that they have a solid background in reporting that is gathering the news, writing, which would be distilling the news. But one of the things that you can't teach people is enthusiasm. Uh, if people are really interested in doing this kind of work, that's the thing that's going to be driving them to get those scoops, to work on developing sources, and to chase down leads. That's, uh, you can teach reporting, you can teach writing, but enthusiasm is something that really shows through. The most challenging part of my job is getting people to return my phone calls. Uh, I'm actually, when I call, it's often bad news. Somebody's getting sued, someone's being charged with a crime, or someone's gone bankrupt. A uh, big part of the job is really getting people to respond to you. Uh, but another big difference between the kind of reporting I do and the kind of reporting I used to do is the difference between government and the private sector. With government, if you want to know how many people they employ, who those people are, how much they pay them, they have to tell you. With the private sector, the transparency is uh, much less, so there's a lot more digging that you have to do, much more source working, uh, much more public document searching to get inside a company and understand if somebody doesn't want to tell you.
The part I love most about this job is the thrill of the hunt from when somebody gives you a call and gives you a tip, but they can't really tell you more uh, about where the news is or how to track it down. All you know is that there is news out there. The question is, how do you get it? That's my favorite part is putting together a, a puzzle where you don't know what the puzzle looks like or even how many pieces there are, but it's your job to go out, find them, put them together, and then put it in the paper. My favorite memory of uh, my job as a reporter really goes back to the very first professional piece I had. Uh, I remember when I was uh, at the University of Minnesota just trying to get into the journalism school. Uh, I had a freelance piece for the Minnesota Daily about a, a dorm mate, somebody who lived in my dorm, who was paying his way through school by playing online poker. That was my first story and I remember that I, I could barely sleep the night before it came out. I got up early to go get that paper and wait for it to come out, and that was probably one of the most rewarding bylines I've ever had.